Hello and welcome to You Asked For It. I am your host, Ann Page. This week I'd like to thank Sweet Dreams Furniture of Brunswick for this beautiful set. And they've been the number one furniture in Central Maine for the last 13 years, the number one designer for the last four. I love Sweet Dreams Furniture. I own some furniture from there. I want to thank the House of Logan for this lovely outfit and jewelry today. They are located in Bath, Booth Bay Harbor, and Camden. I love their shops. And lastly, I want to thank Bath Hair Incorporated for doing my hair today. Thank you, Heidi. I love what you did. This week, we have a wonderful guest from Central Maine, very talented, Sharon Pine. She has lived in Maine on and off all of her life, but for the last 32 years, she's lived in central Maine in Woolwich, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And Sharon is a multi-talented and very versatile person. Uh, Sharon has a program called Children's Music of Bath and Brunswick, and she segued into it from her degree in early childhood education. So Sharon, could you please tell us about your program? Sure. Um, Children's Music of Bath Brunswick um, is based here in Bath um, at the Bath Dance Works and that's um, sort of where I got the idea to start my business is the space at Bath Dance Works became available about 20 years ago and I was just starting to look for a place to do children's music classes and so I'm based in Bath, but I do children's music of Bath, Brunswick in Wiscasset and Brunswick as well. Um, <clears throat> my business consists of a, a program called Music Together, which is a educational early childhood music program that's done around the world, um, developed um, in Princeton, New Jersey in the 80s. Uh, it's a wonderful class for families who have toddlers, infants, and preschoolers. The classes are informal um, because at that age children learn through play and they also learn by modeling the adults around them. So this is a class where parents bring their little one and participate. And there are nine collections and each semester of 10 weeks we do um, <clears throat> one of the collections and those CDs and um, songbooks go home with the families so that they can keep learning at home, and then they come once a week to do their singing together. It's kind of like a community sing-along. So in other words, they practice during the week with the CD at home, and then when they come back to the class, they participate in a group setting? Right. They Thanks. enjoy the music at home with the rest of their family, who maybe not everyone brings their child to class, maybe just one member of the family. But it's just to um, sort of enhance what we do in the class. And... Um, like I said, children learn through play, so during a class you might see one child wandering around and another one sort of relaxing in their parents' lap, but after 10 weeks they're, they're really into the music and they learn a lot. They get um, engaged. Is it getting... singing and instrumentation Sing, or Singing both? and movement, and um, we have jam sessions with uh, percussion instruments. And oh. um, the parents follow me as best they can and um, try to model for their child. And so it's giving the whole family a repertoire of music and some musical ideas. Children don't learn also by moving. So there's a lot of moving in this class because you don't sit still with three-year-olds for very long. So there's a lot of marching to the beat um, or doing scarf dances, um, using props. And we have a, a nice big room, so there's a lot of... Um, room to move, which is nice in the winter time. I saw that. Uh, you sent us a variety of photographs, and in one of them uh, was the parachute dance, and that looked very intriguing. Could right. you tell I, us about I, that? I enjoy using the parachute because it's a way to, um, to keep the beat or make a picture of the, the rhythm of the music. And so I try to lead them um, by everyone holds on to the edge of the parachute. I try to lead them. We have a maybe a piece of music playing or we're singing a piece of music and I try to lead them um, doing the beat. So um, it does help to have props sometimes with little ones. It's sort of 
gathers them in. And we can even do a simple folk dance if everyone's holding on, circle to the left, circle to the right, into the middle and back. And so they can actually learn about the phrasing of the music that way. Now you've been doing this for over 20 years, is that correct? Mm, in probably the, more than that. More yeah. than that. So have you seen some of these toddlers grow into young people who became musicians or dancers? Yes, definitely. Um, I, I sometimes will attend a community concert at one of the schools and I'll, I'll see them playing an instrument there, which is very heartwarming. Um, I also give lessons, so they sometimes come back to me as seven or eight or nine or ten year olds for lessons, instrumental lessons or voice lessons. Um, <clears throat> and I teach at Main Fiddle Camp in the summer, so some of them have followed me there too and are learning fiddle and other instruments um, at the main fiddle camp. So what are the instruments that you give lessons on for the children? Um, my, um, my favorite instrument to teach a beginner, whether it's an adult or a child, is the tin whistle, which is very similar to a recorder. Um, it's, it's fast to learn tunes on because it's technically it's not hard like the guitar. Um, I also teach um, the ukulele, which is nice and simple. I do guitar lessons. Nowadays they have pretty nice small guitars if children are interested. I don't usually teach before the age of seven. Sometimes a six and a half year old will be ready, but usually seven and up for children and also do lessons with adults. Oh, and what is the favorite instrument of children? I'm just curious today. What do you see a lot of? They really like guitar, but ukulele is becoming big, so I'm starting to get some requests for ukulele. That's In fact, I decided to, when someone requested it a couple of years ago, I decided to just dig in and learn with her since I play guitar, so it's been fun. And I found it interesting that your um, degree is in early childhood education, yet you took this road into music for children, mm -hmm. and could you elaborate on why? Yeah, I've always been involved in music. As a child, I played in the, the band. I had a wonderful elementary school singing teacher, so I always liked music and was drawn to it. My parents were always humming around the house. They didn't play an instrument, but they supported our music and um, made it an, <clears throat> an important part of our lives. So I always loved music, and just about the same time I was getting my degree, I was sort of becoming interested in folk music. I had quit the band in high school and hadn't played for a couple years, but was interested in taking guitar about the time I got my degree in uh, early childhood. So those interests sort of grew at the same time. So I would find myself in a classroom of preschoolers getting the guitar out at the circle time. And um, it was amazing to me uh, how children react to music. It's just, um, they love to express themselves musically. And so I used it more and more until I decided to do it exclusively. Instead of being in a classroom, I just do, I'm a music teacher. And I'm sure you never regretted it. No, I love it. Now, did you bring a tin whistle <clears throat> I did. to demonstrate for us <clears throat> today? So this is an instrument that you would use for early childhood education. This is a great starter instrument for children who are seven um, and up. And um, the way I learned it is um, I, I actually finished my teaching, my student teaching, or I did my student teaching in Bristol, England. Um, and when I finished, that was the end of my college career, and I went to Ireland, took the boat over to Ireland, and brought my guitar, because I had been playing guitar. And pretty soon I had to leave the guitar behind because it wasn't very portable. I was doing a lot of um, hiking and a lot of taking buses. So I bought a tin whistle and it's been a favorite instrument ever since. It's something you can put in your backpack. It's simple. Um, you've always got it with you. You can learn tunes quickly and then transfer them to another instrument. So what is the tune you're going to play for us today? So I'd like to play a jig, which is an, an Irish dance tune. And this one's called um, Tobin's Favorite. <clears throat>
Oh, that was charming. I can just imagine children hearing that. It must be so exciting for them. They love when I demonstrate instruments as well. Um, but one thing about the Music Together program that I do when I'm doing for a class is I like to make, uh, make music look like it's accessible to everyone, which it is. Uh, in our culture, we tend to um, put performance on a pedestal, <clears throat> and really everyone has the gift of music. You just have to develop it, and that's part of why I do these classes, because you just need to practice it, and anyone can become a musician. I'm so happy you said that, because I had a guest previously, Peter Kelleher. He was a flute player, and he mm -hmm. said exactly the same thing. I'm right. so happy to hear you say that, because I yes. do believe there's music in everyone. It's true, very true. I think we're a little bit more careful about expressing ourselves in in our country because we have so many wonderful performers. And I didn't, I visited other countries where that's not true. When I did my work in England, I went into their assembly, um, which they have at 10 o'clock every morning, and the singing was unbelievable. And when I got through the assembly, I asked one of the teachers, who's the music teacher in your school? Because the singing is wonderful. They said, we don't have a music teacher, we just all sing we just sing together every day, and um, it really showed. And um, I went to Cuba uh, with a musical group one year about 10 years ago, and it was the same there. Children on the street would just dance and pick up rocks and make rhythm with rocks. Um, they're not as... Um, careful about expressing themselves. They're, they're freer, I they're think. They're freer. Freer. That, that's wonderful to hear. Yeah. Well, you know, you're in the business of freeing children right. through music, so that's exactly. wonderful. And how, I just am curious about the tune that you just played. When was it written? Do you have any idea? Um, a lot of these traditional tunes, they're called traditional because we don't know who wrote them, mm -hmm. um, were written in the 17th and 18th century. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were passed on from father to son with on an instrument, usually or even mouth music, which they used to use a lot um, when they didn't have an instrument. So uh, they're, they're old tunes, and, um, but people have written them down since, and there's volumes of traditional Irish music, which that happened to be an Irish tune that I was playing. How wonderful that you can keep that tradition alive so many centuries later. You know, and speaking of Irish music, I'm very excited about the fact that you're very involved with your own group of Irish singers. Isn't that correct? That's right. Part of my job is also to, to be a performer, even though I like to do community music. And I didn't start music because I like to perform particularly. But when you're a musician, that's just something you find yourself doing. It's like giving back. It's inspiring other people. And... Um, showing them how much fun music can be. And um, so I do, do quite a bit of performing. I have a band called Ladies of the Lake that performs around the state. We usually um, do a little tour in March and April. I also perform with my husband, Doug, right here in Bath. We play at the, um, the 4th of July pre-parade in front of St. Mary's. And we play usually um, at the Mayfair. We do a Maypole dance at the Mayfair. And that is open to, to everyone to come to. And you did a Christmas program, too, because I attended one last year, and it was wonderful. Can you tell us about that? Right. I have a friend, um, Kate Newell, who um, teaches children's music in Damascata area. And she is from England, and she has a lot of wonderful English Christmas music and European Christmas music that I hadn't known before I met her. And um, so when we met, we decided to, to put on a Christmas show every year. And we've been doing it for quite a few years now. It's called Hey Ho the Holly. And that's been a lot of fun. That's I've been to many Christmas shows, but that was really sensational. And I hope you'll do it again next year because I will definitely be there. Yeah, it's, it's more apt to be carols that you may not have heard before, exactly. like from Appalachia. And from, from England and um, the Basque country in, um, in Europe. So it's a lot of fun. 
So now you do have a CD out uh, with the Celtic group that you mm -hmm. sing with. Right? Yep, Ladies of the Lake put out a CD a few years ago. Um, and that's available on CD Baby. Um, I also put out a children's music CD with Kate Newell, who I just mentioned, and that's called Plant Your Cabbages. I think you'd have to contact me for that. I'm not sure that's that online cute. anyway. And you perform in Bath, don't you? With Ladies of the Lake every Monday night, is that correct? Well, that's not Ladies of the Lake. That's my, um, those are my friends from around the state that, pl that also play traditional music. And we play at Burns Pub on Monday nights. We have for seven years now. And that's an informal gathering of community music too. It's not a job, but I don't think I've missed many in the in the seven years. Um, so. In what time on Monday nights at Burns? Seven Club? to nine every Monday night. It's a very nice time to play music there because it's a quiet night in town. More people stay at home on Monday night, and um, you might come in there on a Monday night and and eat dinner and hear the bag the Irish bagpipes the Irish harp, um, flute, fiddle, concertina, accordion. So for me, it's a practice and it's camaraderie. It's time to, you know, get together with friends. And and do you play the flute when you perform at Brian's I play Club? the flute and the whistle, mostly. I don't know if you know that Ireland is the only country that has a musical instrument for its symbol, the harp. And also in Ireland, if you perf make your living as an artist, be it music or through art, you pay no income taxes at all. It's mm -hmm. amazing. What mm -hmm. a great thing. It's incredible. So I would love to know if you could perform something for us on the flute. Yeah, I'd love to perform on the flute. Um, so the flute is the, um, this is a, a flute that you might have found in Baroque times. Uh, the modern flute is called the Bohm System flute. This was um, an earlier um, design. You can see it's very simple. Sometimes it's called a simple system. Sometimes it's called the concert flute or the timber flute because it's made out of wood. It doesn't have any keys. Uh, it doesn't play in as many keys as the modern flute, but you don't need a lot of keys for this old time music. So old fashioned music. What will you be playing for us today on this? I'd like flute. to play a, a clan march. I think it's called O'Sullivan's, and uh, a little jig called Open the Door for Three. Okay, great. <clears throat>
I loved it. Thank you so much. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about today was um, your facility for dance in Bath on Front Street called Bath Dance Works. And I believe it's at 72 Front Street, and it's up on the third floor. I went up there with you the other day to look at it. It's absolutely beautiful, this enormous space, beautiful wood floor, floor-to-ceiling windows, and you have multiple classes that go on there. So could you tell us about that? Yeah, so, um, so when I took over the lease from, it's been a dance studio for a very long time. Um, I, have, I had someone call me just the other day that said they took dance lessons from someone there about 45 years ago. So it's, it's on the third floor, as you said. It's got a beautiful um, wood floor and full-length windows. And it's been a community music and uh, dance space for, for a long time. Right now, there's, um, and for the past quite a few years, there's been a few different adult dance groups. There's a belly dance group. There's a group called Authentic Movement with Kay Mann. And there's an ecstatic dance group with Sarah Wild. There's two yoga classes, um, one with Susan Lubner and one with Helen Hudson. There's a youth dance class with Allison Henderson. Um, let's see if I missed anything. There is, oh, of course, there's a hula hoop dance with Amanda Walden. And then there's lessons with myself. There's two other teachers that teach private lessons, and Pam Weeks, she's a music teacher that teaches everything. You name it, she plays it. Um, Jim Tolls teaches most string instruments, and Danielle Paws, who's a harp teacher and also does um, a youth music education group as well as um, piano. <coughs> Excuse me. I, so there's a lot going on there. I have to ask, what is ecstatic dance? I've never heard of that. A lot of it's just very creative movement. I, I've watched them. I haven't danced with them, but it looks like lots of fun. Being creative through movement is what it is. It's interesting that it, the studio is located in the very heart of Bath. Mm. So when you think all this music and movement goes mm. on at the very heart of Bath, right? and maybe it helps to move the energy around and make it such a creative and wonderful city, which of course it is. Oh, I know, and I'm so grateful to be part of, sort of right in the heart of the community, and I'm grateful to the, the, the Morse family who um, rents it out to us. And... Um, it's wonderful. It brings people from other towns too to Bath and who often leave the class and go have lunch or go shopping in Bath. And yeah, it does feel wonderful to be part of this music and dance community and, um, and be right in the heart of town, as you said. It's, Bath is a wonderful community. And, and I'm so grateful to you, Anne, too, for doing, and for, to Steve for doing this community TV. Well, we're, we're thrilled to be here mm. and to be able to share this with the viewing audience. Right. So if people wanted to um, get in touch with you, mm -hmm. if they had small children and they wanted uh, to have their children be part of your programs or if mm -hmm. they individually want to take music lessons or mm -hmm. whatever, how would they do it, Sharon? Well, the best way is to go right on my website. And um, I have a couple. I have one for Bath Dance Works, and that's www.bathdanceworks.com. And Children's Music of Bath, Brunswick is www.childrensmusicofbathbrunswick.com. No apostrophe or anything. Okay, wonderful. And, you know, for some reason this season I've had a lot of musical guests. Mm -hmm. And I've asked each of them this question because I feel it's very important. It seems as though the first programs to be cut in the public school systems are art and music. Mm. And I'd like to ask you how important you feel musical education is for children. Oh, it's, it's very important. Um, not only do, does music help children to learn about language, and, um, but it also gives them a wonderful way to express themselves. And I think that is even more important that sort of self-expression and being able to have another way besides, you know, chatting with your friends that you can express yourself. And I think the one thing we didn't cover was you do programs at the Bath YMCA as well. 
Right. I, I do travel with my music. I don't stay just in the bath dance works. I travel to the, the Y has a wonderful preschool program and I visit there pretty regularly. Um, the Wiscasset Community Center I visit um, once a week. Um, I have a co-teacher, Matt Lucigian, who does the classes in, Bruns in Brunswick for me because he happens to live there. So he and I work together and he does music together. And um, Yeah, so I do travel with the children's music and with the performing quite a bit. And you brought a few other instruments. Could you explain to us what you brought? I see a, yeah, I did, a drum I did, there. Yeah, I love to use in my um, children's music classes, I like to use percussion instruments because it's something they can do too and we have a jam with percussion instruments during the class. Mm -hmm. um, so to make it accessible for everyone, I try to not get too complicated. I don't do a lot of performing in my children's music classes. I play the instruments that they play and it might be something like this little instrument right here, which is, I just call it a clacker. Um, and we, there's a little song we do in the children's music classes called Mountain Dew. And it's a traditional Irish song. It just happens to be Irish. They have songs from other countries, too, as well as American folk music. But um, so this one's done with mouth music. It doesn't have to be the same mouth music I do, but you make up your own little sort of scat, like okay. in jazz. Go ahead. With a skilly idle lum, skiddly doodle deedle dum, skiddly doo, high skilly aye. With skiddly idle lum, skiddly doodle deedle dum, skiddly doo, high skiddly aye. Oh, I'm jumping up and down and turning all around, skiddly doo, high skiddly aye. With skiddly idle lum, skiddly doodle deedle dum, skiddly doo, high skiddly aye. With a ding a ding a doo and a ding a ding a day, skiddly doo, high skiddly aye. With a ding a ding a doo and a ding a ding a day, skiddly doo, high skiddly aye. Thank you, Sharon Pine. She's all about music. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank, Thank you, you man. You're welcome. Thank you for watching, everyone. And remember, sweet dreams.